guys, how you doing? It's you, it's me, I'm Grant, and you're my team. So, if you've been keeping up with us on the channel, you'll know that we've been playing with each of the Fire Emblem characters in our lead up to Fire Emblem Pre uh, Three Houses. This is Fire Emblem Three Houses, and this is the final episode today. So, today's episode focuses on Corin, and we've already played, if you've kept up, you'll know that we've played as Marth, we've played as... Ike, we've played as Robin, Lucina, Krom, and... Uh... Who am I forgetting? Corin. Not Corin. Well, we've not played as Corin yet, but... Roy. <laughs> Match one! I am so out of practice for Corrin, guys, it's not even funny. But yeah, tell me, hi guys, how have you been? Is everything good? Is everything great? Me, myself, it is hot. This weather is atrocious. And two days after I'm recording this, we are supposed to have... 34 degrees Celsius weather. No thank you, good sir. Spare ice cream? Yes, please. Real talk, I'm not even gonna lie, I actually really like the Pokemon Trainer. So it's that time of year where things are ludicrously hot. Stay hydrated, everyone. Bye. Oh god, you're alive. Yay! Now we just got one last one to do. Stop. Oh no. No. Ha ha ha. So it's like a bit of super armor on Corrin's up B then. Oh, there's lag. Lag, no. Oh, I'm gone. Yep, I'm got honestly, I, I'm not even mad. We hold L's out here. That's fine. We only play for fun, so it's cool. We did it, Charizard. Yeah, Charizard is my absolute least favorite Pokemon. Not for that, but I just mean like in general. Like I just I hate I've always hated Charizard. Right, so we have obviously like the many different costumes for Corin. Well, let's switch it up. Let's go with female. Piranha plant. Do you know, I never fight piranha plant. So, let's go for a bit of background on Corin. Okay, so Corin comes from 
Okay, so it's kind of complicated. Right, so... Corrin's game is Fire Emblem Fates, but Fire Emblem Fates is actually split into three different games. You've got Fire Emblem Fates Birthright, Fire Emblem Fates Conquest, Fire Emblem Fates Revelation. Now... <sighs> it's gonna be tricky to explain this, so... Stick with me. If you've never played Fire Emblem Fates, well, you're not really missing out because it's probably got the worst story out of any Fire Emblem game. In my opinion, try not to flame me too hard for it. <laughs> Just respect me and I'll respect you back. Okay, so basically, Nintendo didn't do the best world building when it comes to Fire Emblem Fates, and as a result, we don't exactly have a name for the continent that Fates takes place on. So instead, let's just go over what we do know. Corin comes from a kingdom known as Valor. Now Valor cannot be talked about when you're outside of Valor, because there's a curse on Valor, thanks to Anankos, which is the dragon, king, whatever, that resides there. Also Corin's father. So, Corin and his slash her mother, Mikoto, flee the kingdom of Valor, right? Once an Ankos goes berserk. Brilliant. Right. Arete, who is Azura's mother, is Mikoto's sister. So Azura is Corin's biological cousin, okay? Right, good. She's important, remember her. Uh, Azura, I mean. Right, so. Corin lives out his happy childhood. His super duper early years, anyways. Yikes. <laughs> In the kingdom of Hoshido. With his mom. And his older brother Ryoma. His older sister Hinoka. His stepfather Sumuragi. His younger brother Takumi and his younger sister, Sakura. Well, I say younger brother and sisters and older brother and sisters, they're all step. Because Mikoto married Sumeragi, she married into that family. So they're all steps, right? Okay. Aha, get caught in the chubbish. Right. So Corin's a baby, right? And gets kidnapped by King Garen, who is the king of the Kingdom of Nor which is on the opposite side of, we're gonna call this continent Fates Landia. Okay, right, so you've got Hoshido on the west. No, left is west. Okay, right, so east, there we go. I always get left and west and east and right mixed up, I'm sorry. So basically, Hoshido is on the right side and then Nor is on the left side. Right, what happens is, is, yikes. <laughs> Um, you want to get some Tic Tacs because I bet your breath stinks. Right. Um, King Garen kidnaps Corin. Right? Got it. Brilliant. Corin then lives the rest of his childhood into his like early adulthood as this closed off individual. Like, living in a giant castle, essentially. And he now has... Well, technically... Wait, if he's been... Would you call it adoption? See, I just I just call it abduction, not, abdu not adoption. But the thing is, is Corin's family in Nor, which is King Garen, who makes Corin think, oh, I'm your dad, but I'm also, like, the big bad, I'm super evil, whatever, ha 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 ha, one dimensional. What costume do we want? Yeah, we'll go with red. Right, brilliant. Oh, God, a Luigi. I hate Luigi. Kill me. I hate this stage. No! Right, so, super one dimensional King Garen turns around and he's like, oh, by the way, these are all your siblings. Now you've got an older brother called Xander, you've got an older sister called Camilla, you've got a younger brother called Leo, and you've got a younger sister called Elise. So they all, like, accept Corin into the family, and it's, it's, it's really nice, it's really heartwarming. If you wanted to add actual character development to that. <laughs> and then basically what happens is, um, they're having, a, like, 
they, there's like a training mission that goes wrong. This is like early in the game of Fire Emblem Fates. Oh god. I should have seen that coming. And then what happens is you've got um, Corin getting knocked out and then brought back to Hoshido. When the Hoshido royalty have spent years trying to get Corin back. And they just knock him out and bring him back on one, like, from a simple mission. Like, okay. Logic, but also plot convenience. Hashtag Deus Ex Machina. So as soon as Corrin's reunited with his mom, and then, like, she's like, oh, by the way, I'm your mom. Haha, -ha. like, I'm, I'm full of love and support and all this, right? What happens then is, there's a big event in, like, the big Shirasagi Plaza. And there's a giant explosion. There's like this weird phantom dude with a sword, who, by the way, when you play Fire Emblem Fates Revelation, you find out that that phantom dude is actually the ghost of King Sumeragi, Mikoto's husband. So in a sense, the husband killed the wife, but whatever. Because controlled by Anankos. Anyways. And then, because Mikoto dies, right? Bushido finally turns around and says, you know what? Enough of your bullshit, Nor. Let's go to war. It's took them until this point, because they've just took so much crap from them of it years. Like, we're all faceless, and we're all at Norian soldiers, but Mikoto put, like, this big magic barrier up that basically said, no, anyone who comes near, Hoshido, will lose the, lose the will to fight, because this land is a peaceful land. Haha, <laughs> you will not suck me up. Nice try, Luigi. Haha. <laughs> So Nor goes to war against Toshido, and Toshido's like, Hey, we're on the battlefield, what's good? And that's when you've got your big choice. And it's like, oh, which side of this war do you go with? Do you side with the Kingdom of Toshido and take revenge against Kingdom of Nor? Because, oh, do you know what? Honestly, I'm not even mad that I lost that. Because, like, Obviously, it makes sense. It makes sense. like from a narrative standpoint, Birthright is probably the be the best written one. Next game. Oh, Jigglypuff, nice. Right. So, what happens then is Corin has to choose which side of this war he's on. So, do you side with Hoshido and do Birthright? Do you side with Nor and do Conquest? The most brutally difficult one of the three different pathways. Or, do you refuse to choose a side, which is technically the true canon, but at the same time has the most plot holes? And it's like, how, what, why, huh? Like, I'm not even kidding. When you look at how Fire Emblem Fates was written, it's easy to see that it's just a giant cluster of just awful storytelling and pacing. Oh god, I've got it coming. Ugh. I could sit here, I could talk smack about Corrin's game, but the fact is, like, mechanically, when it comes to the battles, right, the mechanics are brilliant. The soundtrack is gorgeous to Fire Emblem Fates. I cannot knock it there. The kids, though, they were shoehorned in. They just, they were. And it just makes, it just, oh, God, it just, everything suffers from it, which is why I'm so excited for three ounces. No kids. Time skip. I'm borrowing heavily from the best Fire Emblem game, Genealogy. Well, I said that I've never played it, but well, I've, I've never played Genealogy, but I mean, hey, I've heard people sing mighty praise about it.
this Jigglypuff needs to stop. I didn't know you could count as saying! Coming. Ooh, so close. I'm going to pop this balloon. You know what? I don't care. I am winning this. Bye! Yay! Oh, that felt good! Oh yeah, Corrin's a dragon, by the way. <laughs> like, Corrin has the blood of uh, the Valite dragons. Like, Hoshido has, like, the Dawn dragon, and then you've got the Dusk dragon for Noor, and then you've got the Silent Dragon for Valor. And it's like, okay, next game. To be buff. Yeah, I don't think I'm a fan of this outfit for Corrin, this orange one. Not my favorite. But I mean like, you know, I could sit here, I could say Fates was horribly written, but some of you are probably thinking, yeah, it's alright to sit there and slag off someone else's work. How would you actually improve it? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, this is if I wrote Fire Emblem Fates Revelation. This is how I feel it should have gone, right? So, like, Revelation should have started out with the Awakening kids in their DLC. Like, so, Owain, Severa, and Inigo, right? So, they go by aliases in Fates. It's still the same characters from Awakening, but they go... They go with like a different alias and they serve Xander, Camilla, and Leo. Like Laszlo Inigo serves Xander, Selena, Severa serves Camilla, and Odin, Owain, serves Leo. Right? Okay. They had like these DLC chapters and it basically explained how they came to Hoshido and Nor and that entire world of Fates Landia. Right. I feel like that should have been the beginning of Revelation, right? Like how they got from Valm's military to Fateslandia. Seriously, Nintendo, what continent is Fates even set on? So we get to see them integrate themselves into Nor's army. The Norian royals explain why they're at war with Hoshido, and they unleash hordes of Faceless upon Hoshido. The birthright royals then deal with incoming invasions from Nor's forces, and this gives enough development for them before countries go to war, right? We see both sides of this and we get to play as both armies, okay? Right, that's nice. Then we move on to the Corrin stuff, right? Mikoto still dies because parents just die in Fire Emblem. It's a thing, unless your name's Elliewood. He's the only example of a living parent. Right, so, Corrin refuses to choose a side. Obviously, because that's what happens in Revelation, right? Azura sides with Corrin. Corrin and Azura actually struggle to recruit the royals instead of having the royals blindly side with Corrin for plot convenience and have to bait them into Valor because of the Valite curse. Like similarly how they did to like Xander and Ryoma, if you wanted to call that baiting them. Like because they, they said, oh come and meet us down at bottom at Bottomless Canyon, which I was there a bottom or a Bottomless Canyon by the way, woo, yay. Well done, Jiggly. And it's like, when you look at how Leo, Sakura, Elise, Camilla Hinoka, and Takumi all joined, Ganon Dork. It's like, why would you blindly side with someone who's shown no clear intention? 
to fight for your cause, you know? So just, you know, manipulate and trick your enemies that you want as your allies into coming to the unspeakable land, you know? Because then obviously when you're there, by luring the, by luring the royals into Valor, Corrin and Azora have to explain the situation to the royals who are trying to kill them for their own reasons while trying to kill each other. It's a three-way fight between Corrin and Azora, right? They're on one team. Then you've got Hoshido, its own team, and Norm, its own team. So, obviously, incredibly challenging gameplay. But then again, you could think, oh well, Fate's Revelation Chapter 6. You know, just take out a commander in four turns. I'd rather not. Right, so, the Valai army would then appear, and Anankos would make himself known. So Odin, Selina, and Laszlo would notice something familiar about Anankos and realise Corrin was, was the one who they were supposed to serve when Anankos addresses Corrin directly as his son forward slash daughter, you know, because then obviously we're beginning to flesh out Odin, Severa, Inigo, I'm literally mixing up people's names here, aliases and names, right, okay, so Owain, Severa and Inigo, we get to flesh them out a little bit more, bring them back into the forefront of the story, uh, we get to flesh out Anankos, we get to flesh out Corrin, it'd make it a lot more engaging, right, you still with me? Good. So Hoshido and Noor unite to take down Valor begrudgingly, and they ally with Corrin. It's during this time that the Valite army just relentlessly attacks Corrin's army for years upon end, right? So we'd obviously get to see uh, a new time period where only specific units can be sent into certain battles, you know? Um, like, for instance, Royals and Retainers, right? And it adds more of a challenge. During this time, um, everybody starts having kids, and this is like where you would get your natural seamless integration of Fates as kids, right? And you'd even get like Azura teaching Shigure lost in thoughts all alone. Like the secret fourth verse as well, like from the Heirs of Fate DLC. Yay! Yay! We won! How you doing? That went well! That went well! I like Corin. Corin's voiced by Cam Clark, if you didn't know, and Cam Clark was also the voice of Simba in Kingdom Hearts 2. Fun fact. Ha ha. Right, so, back to this. Um, so, Azura could teach Shigure the Lost Four first, right? More time passes and the kids will have grown. Right? They've been born, they've grown. Um, the final showdown would be Corrin's army. Well, I say the final showdown. The final showdown for the first half of the game would be Corrin's army fight fighting Anankos in what we know as the Revelation Endgame. Only the twist is, Anankos canonically eviscerates the army. So then you'd have years and years of battle and fending off continuous hordes of these Valite troops and you'd have the kids become expert warriors essentially. And that's when you'd integrate your Heirs of Fate style DLC, but not as DLC, you'd incorporate it as your actual main story. Like, this is now the climax of the end game. Let me focus on this one.
I literally hate fighting Ganon. Right, okay, so. Where did we get to? In my thoughts, hold on. Uh, da -da -da -da. Expert warriors. Okay, right, so. The kids then begin the Rares of Fate DLC chapters, right? But the children would all fall out with each other, right? And be divided into two nations again. So you've got Hoshido and Nor because of a lack of compromise on how to defeat a seemingly undefeatable woohoo enemy. Yay, we nailed it. Corrin is awesome. Yay. Right. Um, after a reconciliation thanks to Kana and Shigure, which is Corrin and Azura's kids, uh, the kingdoms would then unite with a solid plan and unleash their final gambit, which is a full on assault on Castle Gyges, where Anankos awaits in Valor. This is where you would have your Heirs of Fate finale, and this would be the true canon ending of Fire Emblem Fate's revelation, right? If I... It, you know, honest to God, Nintendo would scoop me up, let me write it for you. Right. So, cue the Heirs of Fate finale and how Anankos revives the parents of the kids, which now serve as his undead soldiers, and how the kids have to kill the Gen 1 units, essentially, and they do so with great difficulty. So when Ankos finally falls, Hoshido and Nor would then agree to a peaceful existence and Shigure can finally leave his mother's pendant and her legacy behind him and in doing so, he tosses the pendant he inherited from her into the lake where Azura met Corrin. Boom. Cue credits. <laughs> I mean, that's just what I would do. Oh god, do you know what? Honestly, I don't care if I get caught in this final smash. It is what it is. Joker's cool. Wow. Yay. Stand straight and try to keep your Shut up, Wee Fit Train. You don't tell me what to do. Return to your original position. Follow my lead. Okay, I had that coming. Hold this pose for thirty to forty. Okay. I seriously underestimate that. You'll be fine. We won't be fine. Haha. -ha. Yeah, I had that coming. <laughs> So I'm basically a full stock behind. Now, return to your original position. Roar. Bye. Let's see if I can bring this to a fair fight. Turn to your original position. Nearly. Okay. Work on 
Oh. Yep, I'm gone. Alrighty then. Honestly, not even mad about that. Not even mad. I think we've got time for this last game. Three, two, one, go! You know, it's funny. I have a younger cousin who has Smash Brothers Ultimate, right? And I was teaching him a little bit about Greninja and how to counter with Greninja. And I was actually using Bowser as the training dummy for that. And I just said, just press down B, you'll be fine. <laughs> Just wait. Nice. Okay, he must have known that I was gonna roll. Yep, we'll take that. That's fine. Okay, ouch. See, I was hoping that the fire would be able to damage me to the point where I could just get like a second up B off, essentially. We did great! I win! Corrin's awesome. Honestly, right. I like Corrin as a character in Fire Emblem. I like him as a character in Smash. I don't think Corrin deserves as much hate as what he gets, to be honest. Right, but that is going to conclude it for today's episode, guys. So if you have enjoyed, by all means, feel free to press like and maybe share a video out. We do have other episodes in the playlist, which I'm going to leave at the end of the video. And, you know, there's a couple of other projects as well that we have on our channel. Feel free to check those out. We've got Project Umbra, which is our Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 Let's Play. We've also got our Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torn of the Golden Country Let's Play. But for now, I'm going to love sure and leave you, and we're going to check out some scores from how we've done overall with this Let's Play. Well, this series. So, with Marth, we won twice, we lost four times. With Roy, we won five times and we lost three times. Ike, 4-4. Four, four. Krom, 5-2. Lucina, we won five and lost four. Robin, 6-3. and three. Four and four for Corin, and we won 31 games compared to 24 losses. But like I said, here are those playlists. Feel free to check them out and subscribe. Thank you all so much for everything. I really do appreciate you guys.